What's up everybody? Miles Best here, host of Above the Noise. Now today, we're gonna be talking about politicians on social media. I've been doing some scrolling, you know, been on the internet. Take this guy, Mark Warner, for example, senator of somewhere, I forget. But he was online and he was making a tuna melt. You know, seems like he's being authentic, right? Who doesn't like a tuna melt? However, the guy just microwaves the fish. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't trust a person who puts fish in the microwave. He didn't even bother to toast the bread, but his authentic self. Now I know you're probably like, dude, the election's over. Why do I even care about politicians and why do I care about them being on social media? Well, I'll tell you why. There was record setting youth turnout in the 2020 election. 25 million people under the age of 30 voted. That's the highest it's ever been. Yes, I said ever, both in raw numbers and percentage of eligible voters. Politicians, they want as much of that youth vote as they can get. They wanna suck it up like a vampire. And where do politicians think they can find the youth? On social media, duh. But here's the thing, most politicians, they don't really get how to use social media. They have problems following the most important rule of all, which is don't be awkward. Uh, so I'm here at the dentist and we're going to continue our series on the people of the border. Mmm, big gay ice cream is the best. I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids. Mmm, liberal democratic values are sweet. Just like the sweet colors. <laughs> mm. See, that was hella awkward. <laughs> but at least they're trying, right? That's gotta count for something. And if politicians really want to connect with us on social media, maybe we have to accept some of that awkwardness as part of the deal. So, should politicians have no filter on social media? All right, so the end game is for politicians to connect and get as many youth voters as they can through social media. So let's check in and see how they're doing. Here it goes, here goes the video. Hold on a sec, I'm gonna get me um, a beer. My husband, Bruce, is now in here. So, hey. this is my sweetie. Hello. Um, he's, and I'm crazy. Uh, I love you. I love you, too. Um. <laughs> um. That was the most cringiest thing I've seen in my lifetime of watching American politics. I thought it was very awkward and weird. It just seemed to not really have a point. I don't know what she was doing to her husband, but it seemed weird and they both kind of seemed uncomfortable the whole time. That's just somebody being a regular person. They were saying I love you to each other. I mean, it's just regular people's stuff. Elizabeth Warren is a grown adult. She's able to live her life the way she wants to be living her life. Okay, I'm bored in the house and I'm in the house board. I'm bored in the house and I'm in the house board. I'm bored in the mug and I'm in the house oh. board and I'm bored in the mug and I'm Stop in the house it. board. Bored in the house, bored in the house, bored, bored in the house, bored in the house, bored. Okay. Cringe. That's all I can say about that video. That one was cute. <laughs> I would say that's cute because it's like he's trying. That was a pretty creative sneak diss just in kind of the cringiest and corniest way possible. I get it. He's doing a, a trendy thing that like the youth does and that's just... That's just advertising to me, you know? I mean, I like the idea of trying to, like, relate to TikTok users and stuff, but honestly, like, <laughs> he put no heart into it. Like, he was bored in the house and I'm in the house board. Bored in the house and I'm in the house board. Like, come on. If you're gonna do a TikTok, put some effort behind it. Okay, okay. Andrew Yang! He's moving! Look at him go. Okay, I really like that one. That was funny. It, it was good because it was just like, it felt natural and it felt real. It was amazing. It was, it was actually awesome. I mean, he's just skating his life away. I mean, he didn't fall. So, I mean, he's done it before, I guess. I definitely think I like to see politicians being like human beings. It makes them seem more personable. I honestly liked it. It was kind of fun, kind of cool. It shows you connecting with your community, being somebody who's well likable. It shows that you care for your audience. You want people to like you and show that you're fun and that you have a personality. Shout out to the youth for always letting us know how you feel. Social media ain't easy, you know what I'm saying? It's a new and confusing thing for a lot of politicians. But throughout American history, politicians, if they wanted to succeed, they had to master whatever communication tool was popular at the time. Ben Franklin, he passed out pamphlets. FDR delivered his fireside chats over the radio. JFK won over America with the television. And apparently Joe Biden is gonna slip some mind-controlling messages into COVID vaccines. 
that was sarcastic if you couldn't tell. I'm sorry if, you, if that went over your head. <laughs> but now it's all about social media. It started with Obama on Twitter back in 2008. And now Trump basically lives on Twitter. He's the first president to have his own personal Twitter account. Love him or hate him, he's definitely being himself on the platform. <laughs> and that's been a big complaint about politicians for decades is that they're not authentic. They wear their suits and stand behind the podium and they just feel real stiff and fake, kind of like this. But you can't really get away with that on social media. All right, so politicians being real on social media, does it actually pay off? Well, it might. Check this out. Within the first month of using a Twitter or a Facebook account, politicians saw a small but significant increase in donations. Now remember, political campaigns run on donations, and most Americans donate in small amounts. We're talking 25, 50 bucks. So a bump from social media can be huge. Now, one thing we haven't talked about is how expensive campaigns can be. Social media levels the playing field a bit. Think about AOC. A representative from New York who came out of nowhere to win in 2018 and become the youngest member of Congress. Now she gets a lot of credit for having a strong social media game. She's so good at it that she even gave a tutorial to fellow Democrats on how to use Twitter. And it went as well as you would expect. <laughs> What'd you learn today you didn't know before? That she's really good at Twitter and she's gonna teach me. What'd you learn you didn't already know about Twitter? Uh, to Twitter is communicating yourself. Do you do your own tweeting? Uh, I, I, not much. I, I'm a total neophyte. Now, it would have been really hard for AOC to make that kind of impact she did, even if it was just a decade ago and she would have had to rely on TV and newspaper ads. But social media has something really unique going for it. It's designed to keep you on it by getting you into what psychologists call the flow. A state of mind where you're totally engrossed in a task until you lose all sense of time. Like when I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I will be productive today. And then I take my phone out and scroll and then I realize that I've been on my phone for three hours. See, I've just been in the flow of procrastination. <laughs> But that flow can turn real dark real quick. I mean, newsflash, politicians can lie. And when it happens on social media, misinformation, conspiracy theories, they can spread like COVID at a house party. Yep, you had more than 10 people at your Thanksgiving. You're gonna get what you deserve. No. <laughs> now, you also gotta remember that just because a politician is trying to be all cool with the youths, they're still trying to push an agenda. Like we've been talking about AOC a lot, right? She's killing it on Twitter and on Instagram. She's likable, she's chill, she's somebody you wanna hang out with, right? But at the same time, it makes it that much easier for her to sneak in her policy stuff. Now, when she's on Instagram Live cooking up her mac and cheese, she's not just doing it because she wants to share her recipe with us, it's because she's trying to sell us on her ideas. Shout out to my radicals, legalize marijuana so that we can fund our schools, or I don't know, tax the rich. Now, as long as social media has people using it, politicians will be there, trying to get their messages out to current and future voters. That can go well or not so well, but it's definitely here to stay. But what do you think? How do you feel about politicians going all in on social media? Does it feel like an authentic way to connect to candidates or does it just turbocharge all the bad stuff we already don't like about politics? Oh yeah, before you go, you should check out Terra, a new channel from PBS Digital Studios with a bunch of science shows. You can travel to Antarctica, fly with drones, or get a glimpse inside of a wildfire, all on one channel. Check out the link in the description below and tell them Miles sent you. Till next time, peace out.